whether you're feeling lazy or you're doing a background character or even if you're simply satisfied with the deformation that the rig delivered out of the box you could jump straight to weight painting the face and the hands in my case i'm never satisfied with the out of the box deformation so in the next two chapters i'll show you several ways in which we can fine-tune the deformation of the character what I'm gonna do next is to go over each part of the body of the character, checking the quality of the deformation. For doing that, I'm going to enable the deformation layer, which will show all the deformation bones in case I need to adjust the weight painting of the mesh deformed cage. I will also enable the subsurf modifier on the models. But what I usually do is to drive the subsurf level of the characters in the viewport with a property that you can find in the Blender panel. And this will avoid the need of having to go object by object changing the subsurf level, because we will be able to change the subsurf level of all the objects from one single property. So I will do this using drivers. In the blend rig panel, we can find a property called model res that goes for model resolution. And if we right click on it, we can do copy data path. This will copy the address or data path of this property and we will be able to use it in a driver. So now I'm going to select one of the models and in the subsurf modifier, I will right click on the subsurf level field, which says view that goes for the viewport and I'm going to press Add Driver. Then I open a new window and go to the Graph Editor and from the drop-down menu I select the Drivers mode. So there you can see the driver that I just added to the selected object. I will select the maximum value type, just in case, and I will make the variable a single property one. From there I can select the object, which will be the blend rig armature, biped blend rig, because the model res property is in the rig object itself, actually it is inside a bone called properties. And with Control V I can paste the data path that we had copied before. So as simple as that, now the subsurf level of the viewport for this object is controlled by the property on the blend rig panel called model res. So, to translate a bit what I just did, you can read the driver like this. The driver type will take into account the maximum value of the variables, in this case there is only one variable, and the variable is a single property variable, and that property is in the blend rig object, and the path of that property is the one that I pasted. There it says post bones, the property bone, and then the name of the custom property of the model resolution. And that's it. All that is left now is to copy that driver onto the other models. And for that I'm going to right click on the subsurf level field and I'm going to press copy driver. Then I select another object and I right click the subsurf level again and press paste driver. I will repeat the same procedure with all the other objects. So if I go back to the blend rig panel, you will see that from that property I can change the subsurf level of the whole character. Now for checking the deformations, I will leave the subsurf at level 1, so that it is more similar to the final rendered result of the character. Well, in blend rig I basically use three techniques for improving the deformation. One is the mesh deformed cage. Another one are extra deformation bones that will help in volume preservation and a third technique I used is what I call realistic joints. You can find the realistic joints parameters in body settings in the blend rig rigging panel. With the realistic joints technique I try to emulate the actual volume that real life bones have. In many cases, when joints articulate, the bones not only rotate, but they also move along the neighboring bone in an oval fashion. So real-life bones, in many cases, have a kind of displacement from what you may call the pivot point of the articulation. And that displacement is what the realistic joints parameter tries to emulate. So this distance 
that separates the bones helps in volume preservation by preventing joints from shrinking or intersecting when they rotate and also this distance simulates and preserves the actual length that some body parts may have in real life when they bend such as the forearm, the sheen or the phalanges because, as I said, in many cases real-life bones not only rotate but they also move along the neighboring bone so here in the knee the distance between the thigh bone and the shin bone is too high so I will lower the value of the realistic joint for the knees the other deformation technique that I talked about was to have extra deformation bones these bones have the fixed suffix and as you can see these bones move away from the joint when it rotates so I usually check if I can improve the deformation by modifying the behavior that these bones have if you go to the bone constraints tab you will see that they have transformation constraints and by tweaking the values on the destination fields you can change their behavior as we will see later here I'll just modify the weight painting a bit to make the knee rounder and of course I'm selecting the deformation bones for doing the weight painting in case you're wondering how I select all these different weight painting values I am using an add-on called paint palettes and that's how I select these values presets for weight painting now I'll check the foot deformation I'll tweak a bit the weight painting in the ankle Here I'm going to turn down a bit the realistic joints also in the ankle So here's another area where I don't like the deformation much I'm gonna check if I can improve this by tweaking the extra deformation bones So indeed this bone is going up a little bit too much So I'm going to lower the value from the constraint first For those who are not familiar with constraints yet You can read this constraint as follows when the thigh bone rotates minus 180 degrees in the x-axis and now you see that the x-axis affects the x y and z axis of the destination bone so when that bone rotates the other bone the destination bone which is this extra deformation bone that we have selected will move that is location will affect its location in a certain value in x y and z so the only thing that you need to change in these constraints is the destination value of the constraint which are these last values in x y and z depending on how you want the bone to move so here i'm lowering the values from y and z so that the bone moves a bit less when the thigh rotates then i'm going to copy these same values in the bone from the other side so that we have the same behavior in left and right so now i'm going to go to weight painting and see if i can smooth out a bit the intersection that happens between the thigh and the pelvis so basically what i do is to go to the problematic pose and in that pose i start selecting the deformation bones and i start weight painting and trying to add balance to that deformation by hiring some values in some bones and lowering the values in another bone and that way you kind of model the deformation that you want to achieve
So now I'm starting to feel okay with how it is deforming, especially because it is preserving volume much better than before. As we'll see in the next chapter, if you want to improve the deformation even more, the next step is to add some corrective shape keys to define deformation exactly as we want. Now I'm going to lean the leg backwards a bit, just to see how it deforms in that area. So I'm going to tweak a bit the constraint, and then I'm going into weight painting mode, and I'm going to smooth out a bit the weight. And now I'm going to copy the constraint values to the constraint of the opposite side. So again, the key aspect here is to go into extreme poses and try to correct the weight painting in those poses. Now I'm going to lean the leg outwards. And again, here you see that the extra deformation bone is going up a little bit too much. So I'm going to lower the values from the constraints of that bone. So now you can see that the leg is deforming pretty well in extreme poses. Now I'm going to copy again the values from this constraint to the constraint of the bone from the right side. So now the right leg is also deforming correctly. Now I'll follow with the torso and I'm going to switch to FK to go check in the rotation of each joint. And apparently it's working pretty well, so I will not need to tweak any weight painting for the torso, apparently. So I'm gonna check the collarbone and the shoulders, and they seem to be working pretty well too. The only thing that I don't like much is how the shoulder is moving up with the arm. So I'm going to go to automated movement and tweak the app value for the shoulder. That is in IK outer shoulder, you have all these values that tell how the shoulder moves when the arm is in IK. So the shoulder follows the movement of the arm. So you have the back, down, forwards and up values, which you can tweak in order to get the desired effect. But don't worry, I'll cover this later in other tutorials. For now, I'm just going to lower the app value of the shoulder to 7, and I'll also copy that value to the right shoulder. Now I'm going to check the deformation of the arms. And I think I'll decrease a bit the realistic joints value for, for the elbow. And then I think that this extra deformation bone needs to go up a little bit more. So I'm going to modify the values from the constraint. And then the elbow, where I, I don't like much how the elbow deforms, but I think I'll solve that with a shape key later. So I'm gonna leave the constraints as they are for the elbow bones. But again, I, I'll copy the constraints values to the right bones also. Then I'll go and check the wrists, which seem to be okay. And finally, I'll check the neck, which also seems to be okay. In overall, the out-of-the-box deformation of the body went quite well. So, after doing these extra tweaks here and there, in the next chapter I'm going to add shape keys to some very specific areas of the body, which I don't like much how they are deforming now. So, that's it! 
See you next time.